Hello, this is Nathan, and welcome back to our casual guide to Dwarf Fortress. In our last episode, we went over how to make bedrooms and, of course, work orders. If you haven't checked that out, please do. If you're new to the video series, welcome. This uh, guide aims to explain things as I play through my fortress here. And the reason why it's casual is because I had, uh, during the embark, uh, did some options to make this a little bit easier. Uh, it's a guide to kind of get, get your feet wet if you're first starting out on Dwarf Fortress or maybe missing some details. So, um, welcome. Thanks for watching. And if this is like your second or third video watching this, thank you so much for watching. So let's get right into it. We, on our last episode, ended off um, getting ready to trade with our original dwarf civilization i'm not really sure what to call it i'm sure there's a better word for it but anyway so right now when every start of fall or autumn they're going to come over and want to trade with us so we're going to get two options here the first thing is diplomacy they're uh i guess their outpost leader guy whoever comes over here they want to talk to us about our mountain homes and about the situation so let's talk to him first. So he's going to give us some information on civilizations and world info, with info, which I will click on after this. And then this is kind of important, I'd say. This is where we can ask for certain, I don't know, items uh, for them to trade with us the next time they're here. So that way, if we know we're lacking something, um, we can ask for it for the next year. So we kind of have to think ahead here. So for me personally, I have a, um, some options here that I usually select no matter what. So I always pick all the seeds. Uh, they only offer dwarven seeds like underground. They won't offer anything above ground. I'm sure that's more of a human and elf thing. But I always get all these. You might as well. Um, another thing. Let's see here. Just kind of look in. Now, if you're missing certain pets, um, this would be a good time to do it. Maybe someone died. Um, I can't remember if this is my fortress or another one, but one of my dogs died in the beginning. One of the females, but I still had another one. So this would be a good idea to kind of uh, recoup your losses or whatever, you, how you say it. But anyway, uh, as you can see here, they have all the kind of normal animals that you could pick in the embark. Um, we're not going to do any of that. Let's see. Bags, usually a pretty good idea. I mean, you can always make them. They're not that hard. Um, let's see. I don't want necessarily thread. I will ask for cloth. No. Yes, cloth. We'll cloth. Yeah, I'll ask for cloth. Um, trying to see... What's miscellaneous? Don't need any of that. Backpacks, quivers. A lot of this stuff, since it is a casual guide, we can get ourselves. I am trying to find the silk here. Thread. Here, we'll do this. So, Kate, one thing that I may have touched on in my workshop video is that Doors will get into certain moods and they want certain items to create an object um, or an artifact. And sometimes they will want specific kind of thread. So there are three, there are three different types. Uh, there is silk, which is only gathered by, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure this is the only way, uh, by cave spiders. So when you go to, or I guess not necessarily cave spiders, but spiders in general. So down in the depths of the earth, you'll unlock a cavern layer, uh, layer which we have not done yet. And sometimes there will be uh, cave spiders that create webs and your doors will gather the webs to make silk. So this is probably one of the more rare things to get. So I always ask for this. The other kind of thread is plant thread, which is pigtail. Um, you might be able to make other kind of thread plant, but for the doors, they generally make it out of pigtail. And the last kind is like uh, wool 
or yarn, I guess I should say, uh, either one. Yeah, so like sheep wool. Those are the three different types, I believe. Um, so you need to make sure you have all those. Otherwise your dwarf might go crazy and start killing people. Um, let's see, what else? What else we got here? I'm trying to think, most of the stuff we can make ourselves, um, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just ask for iron bars and stuff. That way I don't feel like making it myself. Uh, so, and then also steel. Steel's the best. Um, there might be other bars that are better for certain, like, decoration and stuff. But as for military purposes, like uh, armor and weapons, steel's the way to go. Hmm, there it is. So cloth. We'll just do this too. And then leather, it's not really too hard to get, considering uh, we have animals uh, that we can always butcher. And that's the reason why we got turkeys, is because we can get turkey leather. I want to say there isn't really much else. I mean, you can ask for logs. That way you're not chopping down trees and the do uh, elves won't get mad at you. Um, but I think that's good for now. We'll just say done. So uh, it will say, hey, we finalized the import agreement. And of course, everything is like double uh, for the asking price because of it, which is fine. They're really not that more expensive. Trading's not really that big of a deal in Dwarf Fortress. Um, unless you're trading with elves. If we, if we ever trade with elves, I will go over that. Uh, they're picky. So... Uh, the person is saying we'll discuss willing to offer for your craft door ship a need for footwear. Um, so if we next year when they come by, if we have footwear for them, they will trade with an extra 200% or offer 200%. So I don't think there's any negatives to that. Um, so if you don't meet it, that's fine. They'll still take other stuff, but they're just letting you know what they need. So let me go back here. If I go to the bottom right, this is like the world info tab. This probably deserves its own video to kind of go over. There's probably not a lot to go over, but I'm not familiar enough right off the bat. So I just know there are certain things here. So what we can do, um, you can always center on the fort so you can see where you're at. And of course, I oh, there it is. There we are. The blockade born. Um, can't zoom in, which is unfortunate, but um, one thing that we can do, and I think it's civilizations. How do we do that? Yes. So if you go to civilizations, and if we go over these guys, uh, this is who we're trading with, um, our liaison. We can see uh, what we agreed to trade with them. And then in the middle there, you can see requests. So agreed in year 100, it's pending. They want footwear. And then you can see all the important people in the civilization, uh, which is kind of neat. And then, of course, they have like other options here. You can see where certain artifacts, artifacts are. Um, news and rumors. Let's see. News and rumors. So it's... It's kind of hard to see since I can't zoom up, but you can see these little squares have an outline. Um, and if you hover over it, in the mid spring of 100, it is the monastery was known to be in the insightful vault. So that must be like an artifact or something. Oh, see, in the early autumn of 99, Captain Talk Copper was kidnapped from Woonman by South Bone Scripts. So they even know who did it. So you get like little news stories that are happening around, um, usually with your civilization. Yeah. So it's kind of neat. I don't think it's super important, but if you like role playing or like knowing your history, um, I think it's awesome. This is why Dwarf Fortress is so popular. But at any rate, let's uh, get out of here. So that's how you do that. Now, the other thing is, since they're here, they need a trade depot. So it does tell us that we need a trade depot. So let's build one. Dun, 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 trade depot. Okay. So it's a pretty big boy. I think it's five by five, if I remember right. One, two, three. Yes. Uh, we're just going to put it right next to our entrance here. 
And then we'll just do... Yeah, we'll just do what's closest. There we go. So let's get someone doing that. While that happens, I do need a specific title. Or person with a title. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but just go with it. <laughs> uh, we need a, um, a broker. Um, as you can see, the broker uses their appraisal skill to allow you to see the value of items in Fortress. They're also the default negotiator with visiting merchants. I'll show you another section so you guys know that's what you need for trading. But for right now, let's assign someone. So we have two people. We have a jeweler who's a novice appraiser. And then we, of course, have our expedition leader who's a novice judge of intent. Uh, judge of intent, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it lets they they have a good judge of intent. I'm not sure if it's useful for trading necessarily. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. It would make more sense in the adventure mode. Maybe when you're talking to NPCs out in the world, you can judge their intent if they're being good to you, lying to you, that kind of thing. Otherwise, we do have a novice appraiser here. So, I mean, that's the title. So let's let's pick our jeweler here. And as you can see, the broker does not need anything. So that's great. Um, another thing that could be useful probably for uh, trading is getting a bookkeeper. Of course, we have our novice record keeper here. And a bookkeeper, what they do is they update our inventory of the fortress so that way it's accurate. So that way you don't get this little like teal day or whatever you want to call it. Um, next to these items, we'll get an exact number. And of course, they need a meager study at least. So very similar to the manager where they needed the same thing. We'll do that. They do have an extra option here on the right. Um, it depends on how specific you want your uh, item count. So it does say... Um, Let's see, highest position, stock, okay, I get it. So when you click on one, it tells you tells you the description of it. So five is the highest precision, stocks amounts display, all counts accurate. Your bookkeeper needs to work in an office to improve precision. If we go to one, so stock amounts display 77 for 80. So as you can see, it kind of like rounds up, um, not super accurate. This one's probably a little better. Yeah. We'll just do two for now. I don't really care too much about it being super accurate. But we do need to build them a new office. So let's do that real quick. Doesn't need to be very big. And then, of course, we will build a... Oops. A throne. A table. And we'll get a bookcase to make it a little bit more fancy. All right. So let's press play here. We're going to let our dwarves start building stuff. And that way we can get ready to trade. Now, this is our first year. And I didn't really set up a lot of trading goods to be traded, which is fine. That's just the way I play. I don't really care too much in the beginning uh, about trading since we are on easy. If this was a more difficult Embark, I would probably set up someone making crafts right away. But anyway, um, I'll show you guys how, what I do after when we're done here. So when the trade depot is complete, we want to, there's a few options here. So the first one is move goods to and from depot. So you're telling, uh, you're telling your dwarves what you want to trade. So this is, a, this is everything in your fortress, uh, literally everything. So it can kind of be kind of confusing, especially when you have a bigger fortress. But essentially, <clears throat> how things are stored is what you want to look for. So if you want to look for food, maybe prepared food, since it's worth a lot, you want to go to your barrels. And then your barrels will show you what they have. Um, so Dwarven Wine Barrel. Let's see if we can find any food here. Yeah, so you can see this barrel, turkey hen egg. There's two items that's worth about a hundred. Uh, we have this plant barrel, which is worth a thousand. Trying to see if we have 
Anything else? I don't really mind selling it unless they're seeds. They shouldn't be seeds, so we'll do that. Oh, prepared food barrel. So we'll trade that guy, and we'll do plant barrel. Because to be honest, I don't know why they're worth so much, but we'll take a peek. I thought I had more. Oh, well. So we have that. It's not... It, a thousand's not too bad. We can probably buy quite a bit. And then anything that's held in bins, like crafts, bolts, uh, lots of things, blocks, that's what you're going to find in here. And then, of course, anything else you might want to trade here. There's not really much I want to trade. I mean, we could trade, like, rough gems and stuff. Uh, but this isn't the best year for trading, which is fine. I, I didn't expect it to be. Okay. I think we're okay for now. So let's do that. So once you check mark it, you can right click and you'll get out of it. So we can see that we wanted to trade two items and we're still waiting for them. So you have to wait for these items to be brought here. As the second part of this is we need to tell our broker to get here. Now you don't have to have your broker to trade, but it's more wise to do so. So we have a few options. So broker requested at depot, anyone requested at depot, no trader needed at depot. So at default, no trader is needed because we don't need them standing around doing nothing. We can also see what our deep or our uh, broker is doing. So right now they're sleeping and uh, it's saying they can access this depot, which is good. We want that. So right now I'm going to tell them I'm requesting them. Let's click play here. And then once they're done sleeping, they will come over here. And then also in the meantime, we're waiting these uh, items to get here. So one of them did. It uh, looks like this dwarf brought it. We can see the plant barrel in the inventory. We can also see, where are they? There they are. Here is the trade caravan. Looks like they just brought some yaks to carry everything. Um, as you progress through your fortress, gain more dwarfs, more higher population, these trade caravans will get bigger. So they put everything on the left here. As you can see, it's a lot of items and you have to wait till they unload. Um, looks like our broker is still sleeping, which is fine. No job, there we go, trade a depot. So um, I don't know if they're here, let's see, there we go. So once they're here um, or once they're available, if you, the trade option will pop up. If this isn't, if you're not able to click it, it's because you don't have your person over there to trade. So, oh, that's interesting. Now that's 300. So I guess that's only worth 300 since they're appraising it. I'm not really sure. Um, but unfortunately with these barrels, we cannot see specifically what's inside. If it was like a bin, that's interesting. Usually we can kind of see. I guess since it's a barrel, we can't really do it. But if it was a bin, you can actually specify what inside the bin you want to trade. So we might just trade this prepared food for now. So let's take a look. So um, I want to trade that. So we're going to check mark it. If we look down, we can see the trader profit. So right now, if I just trade this, they're going to gain a thousand profit, which makes sense. I haven't asked for anything. Um, and then of course they have the allowed weight. So with trading caravans, depending on what they bring in this case, uh, yaks or whatever. And of course, what else they bring in their inventory, they can only carry back so much. So that's, what's kind of limiting them. Uh, they don't have a limit to how much money they can give you. It's the weight. So a good rule of thumb is to let them, um, have a profit about half of what you're asking or what you're trading. So I should only trade up to around 500. Uh, the reason being is you want to give them enough of a profit. So that way they like us more. They'll be like, hey, that was a good trade. You did it in our favor. And they will spread news that we're an up and coming fortress. And we trade well, so other civilizations might come by and trade with us. At least that's the idea. If you are too stingy with your trade, they can say no, and they can counteroffer, 
Or if you did such a bad deal, they'll just say, no, no, thank you. You're being greedy and they will stop the trade and you will have to wait an entire year before you can trade with them again. Not a good idea, especially if you're on a harder embark. So we need to be thoughtful of what we're doing here. Like I said earlier, we don't really have a lot of things to trade. So we're kind of limited. So let's take a look here. So as I'm going through, I can see they have like rope and gems and blocks, you know, nothing we need. Uh, tin and brass bars. Nothing super, I don't know, nothing really that we can't get right now. Um, if we really wanted to. Let's see, we got some toys here. Um, they're selling milk, wine. You can also filter by typing up here. They also have a blue peahen, water buffalo bowl, um, in a cage. What else we got? We got pickaxes. We got some clothes. Man, there's a lot. You can also hold shift um, and do the mouse wheel, and that will, like, skip more than if you're just doing the mouse wheel. Uh, we can see uh, what they have in their bags. So sometimes I'll take a look and see if they have any uh, seeds, which they do. They have dimple and pigtail. Uh, here's the silk. So let's get some cheap spider silk. Here's some wool. So we'll get some cheap wool. Some leather, which again, we'll get some cheap stuff. I already got that. Yeah, we'll get some more. Okay. Let's see. They've got some accessories here. Large gems. Anvils. So, one thing. Um, a strategy, if you will. I would have to see if we already have one, which I think we do. Um, is when you embark for the first time and you customize it, you usually start with an anvil and they cost a lot of points. So... Uh, the first trade, though, that you get from your civilization or whatever, um, mountain home, they will bring an anvil, at least one. So you could wait till then, because you only need an anvil for um, metalsmithing. So you could wait till then and buy one from them. That way you get more points in the beginning. So always an option. I'm going to double check and make sure I didn't do that already because I don't remember. And then of course they have all this prepared stuff. They have fish, they have plants by themselves, which, you know, not a bad idea to get. We get seeds from them. Um, they've got, uh, oh, quarry bush leaves, which is good. Let's see, they got fruits. Of course, they have more. They have armor here, backpacks, quivers. I'm going to buy one just in case. Because your hunter won't hunt unless they have all the accessories for it. Uh, let's see, they've got parts of a music instrument. So one thing with music instruments, I'll go more detail. They have, uh, they are randomly generated. So this is a... I'm gone body and a boo food string. These are randomly generated when you start the game and the parts for them, I believe are also randomly generated. So you have to create a bunch of parts and then you can make an instrument. Instruments are good for pubs, um, you know, that kind of thing, or like a temple. Uh, they like music dancing there. So anyway, nothing we need. So I think we're pretty good. I mean, we can buy some more stuff since we are, um, we could buy probably this instrument. Um, hmm. I actually wouldn't mind getting maybe this water buffalo. We'll see if they let us trade this. Because um, we're going to butcher this guy, I think, and get some food. Let's see. So we can trade. I must make a prop for it. Okay, that's fine. So we'll say no on that guy. They're being kind of stingy in the beginning, which is fine. Um, I am going to get rid of the silk cloth. What else did we get? Maybe one less of these. There we go. Okay, so we're getting a little less. So that way you guys could see what it's like. So we're going to hit trade again. Ah, wonderful. Thank you for your business. Now, one thing you can do is offer as gift. 
Uh, there are certain things that are not giftable, I believe. Um, or it's because this is your home civilization. I actually don't remember. I, that might be why. But if you click offer as gift, uh, you're just giving it away. You're not trading it and they like it more. So um, if you feel like doing that, great. I will do that usually with like the humans and elves. Um, but there we go. So we're done here. We're going to get out of it. Now, what I like to do is immediately uh, say no trader. We don't need them anymore. And then I also will get our things back. So I will click that. And then they now know this is not going to be trading anymore. And they can put it back where it was. Cool. Whoops. There we go. All right. Great. So that's trading. Uh, now, um, what I want to do is set up trading for next year. So what I like doing, since we have a lot of stone, and there's a few reasons why, um, is create stone crafts. Uh, let's see here. So we want, yeah, these guys, craft doors. We want to just make a rock, pretty much anything. I usually will make um, uh, jewelry. Uh, like uh, or accessories like rings uh, you can also just make like crafts um, rock crafts just like little knickknacks that kind of thing you can make figurines which I might do um, and I set it to repeat so essentially this person will forever be making these uh, figurines until I tell them to stop um, that way the next time when I trade I will have all these figurines to trade. They're not worth a lot, but the, by the time they come again, I should have quite a bit. The nice thing too is it, I think, I'm pretty sure, is when they store these, they store them in bins, but they only have to store it in one bin. So when we trade, we just ask for that bin and there's gonna be like over a hundred items in there and we can specify what we wanna trade exactly. So it makes the process really simple. Another reason why I do stone is because everyone likes it. If we were to get elves, they're the picky ones, uh, those dang knife ears, they do not like anything related to animals. Anything. Skin, bones, meat. Uh, I'm pretty sure the animals themselves. I'm not sure if you can trade them or not. Um, and anything to do with trees. So any wood. If there's any wood in the craft, they will deny it. If there's any animal piece, they will deny it and they won't even give you a chance to take it back. They will just stop the trade and leave because they are really sensitive, I guess. So if I do stone, I know I'm good to go for any future trading. So that's what we're going to do. So I set that up. I want to set up a stockpile. So for those maybe who don't know, I have three layers to my workshop area. The, the top layer is where the overabundance of materials go. So I have a lumber yard here. This is the middle level, which is where you see all these uh, workshops at. And I also have a bit of um, the resources where they can just pick them up and start crafting with it. Uh, so we have refuse, lumber, and rocks. Non-economic rocks, I believe. And then the last layer... The third layer right underneath the workshop is finished goods so this one is just wooden furniture so now i want to make uh crafting so let's do so we're gonna do it here four by four we don't need it very big like i said the bins can contain a lot so we will say um uh craft craft stock and we'll customize it, of course. So we want finished goods. I'm going to do um, bone, wood, and dun, dun, dun. what's stone? Oh, here we go, stone. So that way we know all the stone is going to go here. I am going to X-nay two different things, though. Uh, clay stone which is what clay is made into when it's finalized. And then porcelain. Porcelain is another type of clay. Um, once it's fired, it, it goes into porcelain and I don't want to store it here. Oops, let's go back to it. 
And then we could do just all types for now. I might be picky later. We're not going to do any metal or gems. And of course, we want all the quality here. So now they know to store um, the craft door ship, craftsmanship, whatever, craft doors, workshop stuff down here, and we're good to go. Um, another thing you can see is that it automatically set how many bins there are. This is a four by four, so the max we can have is 16 bins. So great. Okay, so someone's going to go over here and start making that and uh, get ready for the next crafting, which is great. Um, let's take a look here to see if anything important is going on. Okay, nothing too crazy. They're unloading. Yep, just saying that. Given birth, autumn has come. Okay, cool, cool. So we're looking pretty good here. Um, just trying to look here. Interesting. Just a little hole here. Okay. Um, so we're good to go here. We can just leave these guys be. Uh, a little tip, just for you guys' uh, knowledge. If these guys are attacked uh, while they're sitting here and they die, um, or if maybe the leader dies or if anybody dies, that can be bad reputation for you. So make sure these guys are able to be safe while they're trading here. Um, there are some cool ways of getting traders in your fortress. So uh, they cannot go downstairs because they will start bringing uh, wagons with them. So what you would do is you can dig down using channels and they can basically, you know, uh, drive down, whatever you want to call it, uh, go to your fortress and they can be safe and you can even make walls and stuff, you know, like a uh, fortification and they can be down there. Um, now it's a little weird with this version five. I'm not really a hundred percent sure, but in the older versions, there used to be an option in the trade depot where you could make sure that they had access to the depot. That, that option is gone. Um, from my understanding, you just needed a three uh, width um, hallway and wagons and stuff can go down it. I don't know if you needed it to be five by five now or five width. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if someone knows, but I think you just need to have to have a three width uh, space and they can get access to the trade depot. Not 100% clear on that since they got rid of that option. But at any rate, uh, let's let's do our next thing in this video. So what I was wanting to do is cover a dining hall. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to make it on the level where our homes are at. So where these guys come down and can get to the main access. I want to make a dining hall down here. So let's start doing that. So we're going to make like a little hallway where they can go down. And then we're gonna have uh, two different entrances here. Yeah, cool. And then this will be the entrance here. Let's see. Let's do that for now. So as, as you're making your dining hall, one thing to consider while doing so is that each dwarf when they want to go eat, they will need, uh, they want to go next to a table and they want to sit down to do so, you know, sit on a chair, but they want to do it individually. They do not want to sh share uh, tables, chairs, that kind of thing. So when you build a table, don't put chairs all around it. Only put one chair per table. Um, otherwise they get grumpy. So just something to keep in mind as you're making your, uh, dining hall here. So I think this is looking pretty good. Another thing that I like to do is make like storerooms next to it. Uh, these storerooms are going to be for our liquor or, you know, alcohol and prepared meals. That way, when they're in this dining hall, if they're hungry, they can grab it and immediately start eating or, you know, uh, socializing, that kind of thing. Because we are also going to make it a meeting area. So I'll show you guys when I do that. So let's see here. 
Um, let's do, I got an idea. That should be pretty big. So one side is going to be our prepared meals and the other side is going to be alcohol. Um, we might make this bigger, but that's what this bottom part is for as we get more dwarves. But this is pretty big um, for now. I mean, we only have 10 people. A good rule of thumb uh, for your dining hall is to have, to be able to, um, what am I trying to say? You want your dining hall to be big enough so that a fifth of your population can be in there at any given moment. You know, not everybody's going to be eating at the same time. They have their own schedules. So having a fifth seems to be a good rule of thumb. So right now we have a population of 10. So that would, what, be two people? So we only need two chairs and two tables. Uh, we know the population is going to get bigger than that. So let's let's start making this a little bigger here. So I always like to make everything out of stone. Uh, just because it's easier and we're not using wood if we don't have to. It's also very dwarfy, if you ask me. So let's let's make um, work orders here. So we want rock, throne. We're only going to do five for now. Actually, we'll do six. And uh, we're going to do table. Six. Cool. So we're going to do that. This person is making... Things for the office still, it looks like. Yeah, still making a bookcase. Uh, so we're going to do that. Cool. I wonder if that was our manager that went by. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to do that. So, oh, I need to make a door, too. Front door. Okay. Let's go back to that layer. All right. So in my other episode, I told you guys I like to dump these rocks inside here. I don't like having any rocks in here. So get them out of here. I also like to smooth it. There we go. All right. Looks like everybody's kind of doing their own thing here. What do we got here? Sandstone, bauxite. Got some gems. Let's check on our um, guy here. Cool, cool. So you can see here that they've already made some figurines. Not sure why petrif- oh, petrified wood. That is a type of rock. All right, let's keep these guys working here. Almost done with the office. Well, we're pretty much done. We can start putting furniture down. So let's do a table. We'll do it a little different. We'll do it in the center here. Awesome. All right, so let's make this for our uh, bookkeeper. Book keeper? Is that just one word? I don't know. Let's see. Nope, it's two Ks. Okay. There we go. All right, so he's got his own office. Let's check on him. And he's happy. So he only needed a meager study, and now he has a modest study. Cool. All right, perfect. All right, he's already sitting down there doing some work. They should be getting updated soon. And as you can see, they already are. Great. Let's actually, um, since we did buy some seeds, we're actually pretty well stocked with our drink. 
Maybe I'll make that later. Okay, we're actually done here. So I I'm gonna keep all the rocks in here. I don't really m m uh, care too much. Um, but let's set up some stockpiles to get this ready here. So our left side here is going to be, uh, we'll do dining hall drink. We're just only gonna do drink in here. So let's go to food, uh, drink plant and animal. There we go. So one thing we need to do is specify uh, something because if we just have it here, that means they're only going to stock this if the other one is full, uh, which is fine. But I, I want this to be the place where they get it first. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this guy and we're going to tell it where it's taking it from. So this one will take, we're going to go up to our kitchen area and we're going to say we're going to take it from this stockpile. So now what these guys, they're going to brew, they're going to stock it here, and then someone will come by, grab it, and put it in the kitchen, which is exactly what we want. Same thing, we can go to this stockpile. Actually, we need to make the other one first. Okay, let's make the meals here. So we'll do kitchen, I mean dining hall, uh, meals. see here food and then we're just do prepared meals it's that easy of course we're going to tell it to take from the kitchen's prepared meals which we need to make some more there we go cool we're looking pretty good we definitely have more than enough drink uh to get us by so let's see if we can create some food i don't know if we have much food to actually make here Let's see, there we go. Someone's doing it, so let's repeat it. And then now they're gonna take that, which is fine. Let's start, let's let's brew some drinks. So I usually just repeat it since we don't really have that much. All right. So, so we're looking good so far. Uh, these little places here are gonna be doors once I make some more. But in the meantime, let's see. Okay, they didn't really have too much. Hmm, let me check something here. So I remember I think I turned these off. Fish dwarves, let's have our fish dwarf doing some stuff and then we can do hunter and we'll get them to start doing stuff. All right, so you can see they're already moving the drink here. Um, let's start making our furniture for now, so table. So let's do this. I'm going to have it kind of running down the middle here. It's going to be like a grand dining hall type of situation. Okay. They've only built that many, which is fine. Uh, we'll go to furniture, chair. Let's see. Nope. Okay. Cool. So they're going to do that. Another thing that I want to do is doors need mugs to drink they will get mad if they don't have mugs so what i'm going to do is create some here so we'll do a work order uh i think it's yeah mug it's not a goblet right so they go by different names cups goblets mugs no that might be like a wooden one or a bone i don't actually let's see goblet nope it's just mug all right so we're gonna make when you make mugs, I want to say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when you make one, I think they make like four or five uh, for each one. So what we're going to do, 10 would be more than enough, um, which I might actually keep because I like having an overabundance. We'll just do 10. Nobody else is doing anything. Um, and this guy, I am going to set goblets to not be in here. But instead, they're going to be down in this area so we're gonna stock we're just gonna have like a little stock area here for mugs so we're gonna do finished goods um i think it's goblets and then we'll just do we'll do all materials here that way if we make any more if anybody comes with anything that's where these cups are gonna go 
Here we go. So that way, when they want drink, they can pick up a mug, have drink right here, and then socialize or what have you. So let's set up. So right here, they're already building it. Great, great. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need eight doors. So let's go back. We go. He's still getting through that. Looks like he's only got a little small handful. In the meantime, let's set up our zone. So this is what dictates our dining hall. So let's go to the zone here. We're going to click on dining hall. And this is going to tell them where they can eat at. Now, wherever you designate a dining hall, whether it be in someone's room or like a more open space here, uh, that is where your dwarf will try to go eat first since um, it's designated. I'm just going to pick this entire thing. Um, well, should I? Yes, I am going to. We're just going to do the whole thing. Actually, there would be more than that. We're going to do the walls included. There we go. We're going to hit accept. We'll just call it dining hall since we only have one. Now, if you click on the dwarf, you can assign it to one person, which would be rude in this circumstance. But there are certain nobles and stuff that want their own dining hall, which we'll cross that bridge once we get there. So that's all you need to do. So now they know that this is the place to go and eat at. Um, if they get hungry, you know, this is a good place to go. Second thing that we can do is set up where is it? Meeting area. So this is going to be a place where if a dwarf doesn't have a job, they can come here and socialize or do whatever, um, blow off some steam. So I usually will select the same area. I'm going to do one square more. That way I have a better time of selecting each zone independently. As you see here, it's going to be overlapped, which is fine. Oh, I see. So I created this little bit. And it's going to be telling you that it's overlapping, which is fine. So we'll say dining hall meeting. And that's actually all you need to do. Uh, it's not a bad thing that's overlapping. You might in your own, when you're playing, you might not like something like that, but it's there just to let you know. So now when they're bored, they'll also come here and socialize, which is good because all your dwarves are going to be here eating and you want to make sure that they're able to socialize with their friends and family. All right, with that said, let's get our guys to go continue doing their own work here. We're pretty much done with this part. Are the dogs drinking? Is that what we're doing? I guess they're just hanging out in the meeting area, which is totally fine. So let's see here. I kind of want to check on our doors. How are they doing? So we've got some mugs here. It looks like they're finally getting moved. And yes, there's definitely more than three mugs here. So every time they make one, there's multiple. We're almost done with the rock and or the tables and thrones. Not quite done with the doors, which is fine. Cool. No, we only made that many. Okay. Not done yet. Okay, so when a bin is closed like this uh, in your in your world. That's not the wor word I wanted, but if you see a closed bin, that means that there's stuff in it. So when you click on it, you can see what it's holding. So that way we have some mugs here and our doors won't be cranky about not having one. And of course we got our own migrants. Of course we did. This is a good time to get some. See, I was telling you guys that we were probably gonna get some more. So we got a doctor, great. Animal trainer, not super important, but we can also see what else. Adequate planter. Nice. 
cool. Oh, we're getting some more. I wonder how many people. So far we're at 15. So what do we else? We got a doctor. Uh, I already said that. A trapper. Neat. A peasant. And a child. So the peasant, if you ever see one, they usually don't have any skills or they might be combat skills. In this case, uh, they're an adequate teacher, which is good. Uh, th this person actually might make for a good military person. Uh, but they are a legendary musician. So we might actually keep that person for a bard position. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah, peasants are... Uh, they don't have trade skills that are for labor, if that makes sense. So like cooking, mining, that kind of thing. So if you see one, check them out. They probably have something else, especially if they're blinking. Um, that means they're legendary in something. And of course, the last thing we want to do is check for their animals. They like to bring pets when they do this. So let's see. Oops. Got to make sure nobody's going to starve to death. Doesn't look like it. So they must have not brought much. Cool. That works. Works for me. All right. Oh, let's build that last table, I believe. There we go. And of course, we can build doors and stuff. Make it a little more official. Uh, but yeah, looking pretty good. Everybody knows where the uh, drink is, it looks like. Yeah, I would say this is looking pretty good. So in our next episode, uh, we're just going to keep trucking along here, seeing what's next for our fortress. I think what I'm going to do is create another wing of our workshop area, because right now we don't have enough space. There's an entirely different section of workshops we haven't even dabbled in, which is these... Um, like furnaces, ashery, uh, the metalsmith, that kind of thing. So I'm going to have that as its own wing. And then down the road, once that's done, we're going to have a third wing just for clothing and leather. So look forward to that. I'm not really sure what I would have on this wing, but maybe you guys have some ideas. If there's anything you guys like me to go over, especially in this casual guide, let me know. I'd be more than happy to go over it. Um, even if it's something I've done before, I don't mind going over it again. So please do. But I think this is going to wrap it up for now. So as always, this is Nathan. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I'll see ya.